United States Senator Rick Scott. Well, it's, it's great to be in Texas, the great state of Texas. And it's great to be back at CPAC. By the way, watching that video, I think Matt did a great job. So let's give him a big round of applause. So I want to start, I want to start by thanking Matt and his whole team for putting this together. They, they did also a great event in Florida, uh, the great Sunshine State. Just before coming on stage, I had the opportunity to give uh, Matt a the National Republican Senatorial Committee's uh, Freedom, Champion for Freedom Award uh, to honor him for all the work he's done to support the conservative cause. So let's give him a big round and see a big round of applause for that. So it's great to be here. My wife is actually from Dallas. She told me there was never it was never cold here. She said there's never any ice storms. Is that right? Not exactly. So both of our daughters, we lived here for about 18 years. Uh, both of our daughters uh, were born here, and one daughter still lives here in Austin with her family. And so it's a great place to come home to. You know, when I was here, uh, I worked here quite a while. Uh, one of the things I did, I worked along the border. Uh, have any of you been to Donna, Texas? Yeah, right along the border. When I went there, we could, we could work, and at the end of the, our day, we would go across the border into Mexico for dinner. You can't do that today it's become extremely dangerous. Biden and Harris are directly responsible for this. This is clearly a border crisis, and no one knows it better than the people that live along the border and actually all over the state of Texas. I find it, I think we all should find it disgusting that Biden and Harris can sit idly by when you see a little 14-year-old boy, Nicar Nicaraguan boy, frightened because he was left in the desert by himself to die. Think about that. They're just sitting, Biden and Harris act like there's no problem here, but there's a 14-year-old little boy worried that he's going to die. Did you see that picture of those two little Ecuadorian girls, the three and five-year-olds dropped over a 14-foot wall, just abandoned in the middle of the night? Doesn't it disgust you? It means, I mean, think about it. All of us, we all know, a, we, we can all think of a three and a five-year-old little girl what are they doing? They're playing out in the park. They're playing with their toys. But these girls were left alone, scared, and they had to be terrified, right? They probably just traveled hundreds of miles, probably had one set of clothes. That's, they were, you know, they do, they have, you know, their whole family was worried about what, what, what was going to happen, just dropped in a foreign place. That's what Biden and Harris are doing. I've talked to Border Patrol agents that said that women, they're so worried about being raped that they cover themselves with feces so they'll be disgusting to men. This is what Biden and Harris are doing. It's disgusting. And, and Harris has a cavalier attitude to this whole human toll that's happening around our border. And this is their crisis. It's Biden and Harris' crisis. They don't want to call it a crisis. They, want you, they, don't want anybody, they don't want the media to go down. They don't want us to talk about it at all. This is, just, this is just emblematic of what we've got in our leadership in Washington right now. Going to the border, has, Harris had no interest in doing it. But as you know, we, she finally came to El Paso a few weeks ago. And it's all she had to come. She had to come because of her failed leadership. That's why she was there. Now, she could have gone with Governor Abbott. She could have gone with President Trump and seen the real crisis, the crisis caused when you don't finish a border wall, when you don't electrify cameras and lights. So what we have to do is we have to talk about this, and we have to fight every day to make sure we have a secure border, and we've got to call the Democrats out for exactly what they are doing. Now, that's my job. I'm the new chair of the National Republican Senatorial Committee. We are going to win in 22. And as a U.S. Senator, I will do it every day. And I know your senators from Texas are doing it every day. We're going to fight for a secure border. Now, I've been elected. I've been there two years. 
every week we go to Washington, D.C., almost every week. You know, it's not full of a lot of conservatives like you. You know, strong conservatives are not really accepted in D.C. right now. The Democrats control Washington. They control the House and the White House. But you know what? They do not control our country. We do. They want to control the way we think, what we say, how we say it, and what we do. But we, together, will never allow that. Demo Democrats want to tell us what to say and how to say it, or else we will be canceled from our jobs, our churches, our schools, our entire life. They want to cancel us. How many of you are not even sure what you can say right now? You're worried about what you can say will it be socially acceptable. I believe there's going to be a big backlash coming, and it's going to come from all of us, and there's nothing the Democrats can do to stop us. Now, in my two years in D.C., I've, I've watched a lot of crazy things. You wouldn't believe how things work up there. So I've watched the Democrats, what? They want to defund the police. They want gut funding for our military. We've watched the Democrats push for open borders and closed schools. We watched them try to impeach a duly elected president twice for nonsense. But those aren't even the craziest things they're, they're trying to do. No, the craziest bill that they have is what they call the For the People Act. Have you heard of it? So let's call it. It's not for the people. We should call it what it is. It's called the Corrupt Politicians Act. So, so far, we've been able to block this insane partisan Washington power grab from the Democrats. But they're going to try it again and again and again. This is, this is their whole focus. They will do anything to gain power and try to control our elections and all future elections in, in this country. They don't want free and fair elections. They want elections only Democrats can win. So let me start by asking you a couple questions. How many do you believe it's racist for, to require voters to show their ID? Of course not. Now, think about it. It's common sense. You have to show it to open up a checking account. And you do have to, I think you should, we should tell the Delta CEO, you do have to do it when you get on an airplane also. But the Democrats' plan is to block it. Now, not for everything, just for elections. Now, do you want, uh, do you want un, unmonitored, unattended drop boxes or liberal groups harvesting ballots so they can pick and choose? Well, I don't think that would be a vote my way. I want to... I want to put, put that one in. I'll put, just pick which ones I want to discard and which ones I put in. Do we want that? The American people don't either. The Democrat bill does both of those things. The Democrats bill, here's the best part. The Democrats Corrupt Politicians Act has you paying for their political attack ads. How many of you think that we should be paying for Democrats' political attack ads with your money? Now, we're not talking about a little bit of money. We're talking about a lot of money. So here's some examples. Arizona, Democrat Mark Kelly is running uh, next November, and we will beat him. But he will get, with this, if this bill passed, he would get as much as 18 million of your tax dollars. How about Raphael Warnock in Georgia? He would get as much as $25 million of your tax dollars. New Hampshire, Maggie Hassan, by the way, Call Chris Sununu, the governor of New Hampshire, to make sure you want him to run for, for uh, Senate. If he does, we will win. But Maggie Hassam would get as much as $9 million. Cortez Masto in Nevada, she would get as much as $11 million. In Colorado, Michael Bennett, he'll get up to $11 million, or $16 million. Now, let's talk about our good friend Chuck Schumer. Now, Chuck Schumer, don't you just love the guy? So, you know, he, he's not partisan at all. So he says we have to pass this bill. He's working on it really hard because we have to pass it to save democracy. No, he wants to pass it to save his skin. Guess how much he would get? Up to $45 million of your money to run attack ads. 
It's corruption for the Democrats right out in the open. And it's based on a complete, complete lie. There's no basis for this. Now, first off, we all should all congratulate the Arizona GOP because they had a historic victory in the Supreme Court, right? So, thank God for President Trump's picks to the Supreme Court. They upheld the election security laws in uh, Arizona. So now, hopefully, in 22, we're going to have all across the country a secure, free, and fair election, which is all we expect. But the Democrats are going to fight tooth and nail to strip, strip states of all local control. But we have to be reunited as conservatives and as Republicans to make sure that every election is free and fair. In free and fair elections, we win. But this, this, this is a complete, this lie is a complete lie from Biden on down. They believe if you have any election reform, all we're trying to do, we're racist and we're trying to oppress voters. It's a complete lie. We have to stand up and say the Democrats are lying. Voter ID is not racist. It's common sense. Preventing ballot harvesting or drop, socks, uh, drop boxes that aren't secure, it's not racist, it's common sense. Preventing illegal immigrants from voting is not racist, it's common sense. The Democrats' Corrupt Politicians Act is a clear assault on free and fair elections and erodes state safeguards that are going to make sure our elections are fair and in a free and fair election, we will win. Our goal is maximum participation in zero fraud. Zero fraud, period. Not some fraud, not a thousand ballots here, a thousand ballots there. Zero fraud. The Democrats call everything they don't like racist. Now, you know, the filibuster is racist, right? Even though Biden, when he was a senator, and many senator Democrats used it to block bills, and the Democrat did last year to block Tim Scott's police reform bill. But somehow, all of a sudden, it's become racist. The Democrats are complete hypocrites. And they're teaching our kids that America is racist. We are not racist. This country is not a racist country. Democrats are absolutely wrong. America is the greatest country in the history of the world, a country that's given more opportunities to people to live their individual dreams than any place on earth. Now, in the past, Republicans have been intimidated when Democrats call us racist. But we got to stop being intimidated. We can't allow that. The Democrats know that they lose on actual policy. We win on policy, so that's when they play the race card. We can't stand down and we can't cower to the Democrats calling us names. They're going to call us racist no matter what we do. That game has to be over. We've got to stand up and fight for what we believe in. Fight for our conservative principles. We're going to fight for free, fair, and secure elections. We're going to fight for a government in Washington that doesn't represent liberal special interests, or woke corporations, or woke CEOs, or Democrat activists that want our children, teach our children that our country and our values are bad. We're going to fight for the values that make our country great because we are the greatest country in the history of the world. We have to stand up every day and fight for our faith, our families, and this country we love. So as, as I said, I just got elected to be uh, the uh, chairman of the National Republican Senatorial Committee. And that might, means my job over the next uh, year and a half is not only just raise a gazillion dollars to make sure we get good candidates, but also talk about how crazy these Senate Democrats are. Make sure we have strong conservative Republicans running and make sure we take back the majority, which we will. I have, um, my oldest grandson loves uh, military. He's gonna be a paratrooper like my uh, 
like my adopted father, and I recently took him to a military museum, and they asked the kids, they asked anybody if they knew the Pledge of Allegiance. And so my grandson was all excited, he raised his hat immediately. So let's all do the same thing. Let's all stand up and say the pledge and what we believe in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, I said, you know, as a grandparent, you get pretty excited when you watch your, your children, your grandchildren grow up uh, to believe in this country. And so I'm proud of my daughters. We have six grandsons and one granddaughter, and I think they're all going to grow up to be great conservatives. But we're, you know, we're living in a nation where the Democrat Party, woke athletes and woke CEOs, big tech, Hollywood, academia, and the liberal media are attacking our values every day. They, Democrat the value, they, dem they attack the values that are embedded, em embodied in the pledge, the national anthem, our flag, and our constitution. They shame us and cancel us when we fight to defend our values, our faith, and our freedoms. No more. When you see groups like this, you know we're winning. Watching my grandson that day gives me hope that our future generations won't lose, lose sight of the importance of our flag, our anthem, our flag, and they'll respect the values that my adoptive father, father fought for and as a member of the 82nd Airborne in, the, in World War II. But as we all know, it's going to take all of us to fight back this woke mob and these radical Democrats who are trying to destroy the values that we all believe in in this great nation. The backlash against the Democrats, woke athletes, CEOs, big tech, Hollywood, academia, and their liberal media is coming. It's because we're doing it. If you want to see a backlash, we can do it together. We can do it by winning in 22. We should win in 22. We can win in 22. We will win in 22. Thank you. God bless America. God bless every one of you. God bless our values. Bye-bye.